Someone said go apply somewhere. First of all, I was just doing this for funsies because we was just having a blast talking. Nobody was begging for money. I just gave people my cash app. Stop coming to my phone talking about some you cute as fuck. I'm cute as fuck. Why you ain't send me no money yet? <laughs> I like to spend money on things I like because they cute as fuck. So why you not spending no money on me? Huh? Yeah, so if you're not going to cash at me, don't talk to me. Don't text me. Don't try to get my attention. Because nine times out of ten, I don't want to. These are Eskimos. Smoke good gas. Gas. My golf bag. Move good work. Work. That's soft pack. Yeah. Got it off that. 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 This ain't no 48, this that new news. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and jam out some stage, fuck around, lose a tooth. Yeah, yeah. She give her that mouth on the stage, she ain't even use no tooth. Yeah, oh yeah. She give her that box on the stage, I ain't have to get no room. Yeah, oh yeah. God. Chrome hearts, my she cold like perfume. Yeah, yeah. Racing stripes, now my worry, this goes home. Yeah, yeah. In the kitchen. My check, my check. Daisy Dukes TV, also known as Daisy, is a young woman who gained popularity through her videos on TikTok. Initially, she started creating fun videos ranging from talking to doing makeup and dancing. Like many others on the platform, she enjoyed the creative process and the opportunity to connect with others. Daisy had a brief stint on YouTube but took a hiatus for some time. On March 17, 2023, she made a comeback with the viral couple prank trend, which garnered over 10,000 views. This marked a significant turning point in her content creation journey. Oh boy, I don't know. I don't know how he's gonna do it. But we're just, so basically, he's gonna walk in because I am feeling a little sick if you can't hear my um, voice. He's gonna walk in and I'm gonna be on FaceTime with I, but I'm not, I don't know how we're gonna do this because she does know him. So I guess like, how do you think we should do it? In one of her videos, Daisy and her friends visit a Walmart store and engage in playful chaos with the equipment. They take turns swinging a baseball bat in the middle of an aisle which could have potentially caused harm to themselves or others. Daisy's actions are met with mixed reactions from viewers, some finding them amusing and others criticizing her for being reckless. Y'all see this? Your mom is the GOAT. You ready? Oh. This is for your kids. So you better make it to the league. Hit the ball. Ready, set, go. <laughs> go again. Come on, like that. I what you did. I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna try to get it right here. One, two, three. <laughs> what sets Daisy apart from many other content creators is her disregard for others. Despite her playful and sometimes funny antics, it is evident that she values her content over most people. In other videos, she often interacts with her friends, showing no concern for the harm she does to others for these pranks. The rationale behind the need for celebrity originates from an upbringing influenced by social media. If you recall the TikTok videos I presented earlier, you observed the frequency of her uploads. It is not uncommon for her to publish 7 to 10 posts a day. It is evident that Daisy has always had an affinity for the camera. Excuse, excuse, excuse y'all. Excuse y'all. Like, y'all see me walking. No, y'all both see me walking. Y'all literally see me walking. Anyway, uh, like I said, don't you don't dismiss me. Uh, ran right over me. Excuse you. I'm not. I'm not done grabbing my stuff. Hold on. Yeah. Go ahead. You, wait your fucking turn. Oh, this is a side note. Um, she would walk around Walmart pulling her pants down and showing her bare booty, which showed me that she did have a few screws loose. In the subsequent video, Daisy returns to Walmart with a noticeable shift in her demeanor. Her tone and attitude become more aggressive, creating a heightened sense of tension. However, she claims this is all part of a prank. In a concerning turn of events, she proceeds to climb to the top of the shelf and walks across it, an act that can only be described as extreme attention seeking. Throughout the video, Daisy exhibits the behavior of a child who lacks respect for their company and its employees. It's disheartening to witness such blatant disregard for the rules and regulations of a public establishment. These types of pranks are particularly troubling because they go to the extreme lengths solely for the sake of generating views without any genuine consideration for the consequences. Help me get down. How am I supposed to get down now? Do a cartwheel like that. A cartwheel? 
I'm gonna bust my ass. I'll do a tumble. I could walk on the runway show up here. Oh. I scared you. It moved. Help me down, I'm scared. Daisy's constant mention of boredom as her motivation further highlights the lack of substance in her content. It's concerning to see someone spend over an hour in Walmart searching for any scrap of content to keep her audience engaged. This desperation for attention undermines the integrity of her work and reflects poorly on her character. It's important to note that such attention-seeking behavior can have serious repercussions, both for Daisy and for the company involved. Walmart is a reputable establishment with the responsibility to maintain order and safety within its stores. Daisy's actions not only disrupt the shopping experience for other customers, but also puts herself and potentially others at risk. It's crucial for creators like Daisy to recognize the impact of their actions and to prioritize responsible content creation. Prank videos that cross the line into dangerous or disrespectful territory do more harm than good. True entertainment should be built on creativity, humor, and respect for others, not on cheap thrills and attention-grabbing tactics. Can I help you? Mm. What? I just want to see. Well, you all good? You can go over there. I just wanted to see what kind of spoons those were. Why are you over there getting mad? Bad built that. Get your ass on. Because <laughs> I forgot I like, on the phone. If she wanted the box. If she would have boxed, we could have boxed. <laughs> In my opinion, the progression of Daisy's pranks, including fake fights, marked the beginning of a downward spiral. She became increasingly comfortable enticing people to engage in fights, and while some fights did occur, I am unable to discuss them or show them due to YouTube's TOS. This prank is featured in six videos, culminating in the notorious Walmart prank that gained the attention of YouTubers such as Marky and August the Duck. The woman's behavior was outrageous and disrespectful. She invaded people's personal space by digging in their carts and walking around as if she owned the place. Her actions were not a prank, but a form of harassment. It was clear that she was only doing it for content and to get a reaction from people. Her behavior was immature and inappropriate. And it is likely that she would have done the same thing even if there was no camera present. Huh? Hi. That's why I was looking for a BBC to help me down. Who's BBC? Big black. Big black. Black. Big black. Yes. A man with a big. Girl, you and your filthy mouth. Sorry, ma'am. I washed my mouth. Sorry. I apologize. And you eat with it too. I eat. I eat a lot of big black. Actually, oh. help me down. I was looking for a BBC up here, but if y'all can help me down, you got grandma. Uh, come on. Okay, come. Wait, do you have a BBC? What's that? A big black. Come on, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. We ain't got time for this. Get down. I didn't say you had one. No. Okay, can you, you help me down. down? People like her find joy in bothering others and causing discomfort. They often like empathy and consideration for the feelings of others. In this case, Daisy was constantly insulting and saying sexual things to men and women, and yelling inappropriate things out loud. Her behavior was like that of an immature 15-year-old, and it was clear that she was not taking it seriously. It is important to call out this type of behavior when we see it. We need to let people know that it is not acceptable to harass others, and that their actions have consequences. We should also support the victims of harassment, and let them know that they are not alone. By standing together, we can create a more respectful and inclusive society. What the hell? What are you doing? I'm putting it on my podcast. Nah, nah. Don't Why? take my picture. I want to take it. I don't want you to well, take it. I want to take it. Don't grab my phone. Don't take my picture. <laughs> you f And don't cuss in front of your daughter. Don't take pictures of people without their permission. Or what? Fuck you, you are a fucking piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You look like a piece of shit. Look at you, you fat. Why I'm not fat, me? bitch. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice fat ass. Thank you. Take pictures of people. You don't even fucking know me. It is deeply troubling that she becomes visibly upset when someone doesn't participate in her so-called prank. This behavior is manipulative and controlling. 
as she seems to expect everyone to simply go along with her regardless of their own feelings or comfort levels. It's as if she lives in a distorted reality where she believes she has the right to dictate the actions of others. Furthermore, the constant gaslighting is insidious and emotionally abusive. It's a tactic used to undermine another person's sense of reality and make them question their own perceptions and memories. By repeatedly denying or twisting the truth, she creates a situation where the victim starts to doubt themselves in their own experiences. This can have a devastating effect on someone's self-esteem and mental well-being. Don't record here, please. Face it down, please. He's not recording you, girl. It's okay. Face it down, please. Face the camera down. No? He's not okay. recording you. Okay, it's okay, ma'am. We can leave. Please. Thank you. He has a medical condition, but if that's what you want to do, we can do that. I don't care about medical condition. That's right what he now. has. I'm telling him. He has please. a whole medical condition. Okay, please. please. I'm about to leave, but he has a medical condition. I don't care. So what apologize because you just. I don't need to apologize. You were just uh -uh. very rude to him. Walk out. Don't do your finger to me like that. I'm leaving. Walk out. No, I think she's Hispanic. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Let's go. Because I don't have time. It is essential to recognize that this behavior is not acceptable, regardless of whether she is doing it in front of a camera or not. Her actions are not funny or harmless. They are a form of emotional abuse that has the potential to cause significant harm to others. It is important to set boundaries with individuals who engage in such manipulative and controlling behavior and to seek support from trusted friends, family, or professionals if you are being subject to this type of abuse. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about the people who are just part of these pranks. I'm also talking about the people who are a part of her life that are maybe going through this or you deal with somebody like her. Uh, Cause we're not gonna be playing around. Don't play with my child like that. What happened? No, what happened with you? I told her I brought her some chips. Oh, uh, cause she talking about you said you took her chips. Nah, I, we not gonna do that shit. What you mean? I didn't take her chips. No, I told what her. you mean? If you wish, you come to I bring told food, you, you bring it now. I told okay, you. Okay, don't play with her. Don't play no. with her. Don't fuck with me. So and I brought don't her chips. My child. Do you understand that? I'm just letting you know. No, I brought I'm her just letting chips. you know. I brought her chips. Why in the are you eating the chips? Because I didn't know that I was supposed to eat them, so I brought her more food. Cause I ate her chips. Girl, well, don't play with me, little girl. Why are you I'm getting so close? Because don't play, don't come in my door with that bullshit. Is it her chips or is it not? I don't know. I, can you, I, those my chips. I just asked you, was it her Why chips or was it not? Close, man? I just asked you, was it her chips Why or was it not? So close. You a little too close for me. Don't f with me. Those my chips up for real. Kiara, is this your chips or not? Alright. <laughs> you better run. <laughs> the incident of the broken TV marked the pivotal moment in the influencer's journey. The viral video capturing the event garnished an astonishing 100,000 views, propelling her to instant fame. However, the subsequent video she created in an attempt to replicate the success failed to generate the same level of engagement. Despite producing more than 15 Walmart themed videos, none of them managed to achieve even half the views the initial TV breaking video did. This is stark contrast highlighting the difficulty of sustaining viral success and the fickle nature of online attention. The influencer experience serves as a reminder that while a single viral moment can provide a significant boost, building a long lasting and engaging audience requires consistent effort quality content and a genuine connection with the viewers. Does it, is it smashable proof? Bitch. Come on, boy, right here. Oh my goodness, can you, can you help him now? I just need peace. Look, if I- I don't have a bat either, I'm not Look, bruh, right. if I hit- Come on, watch out. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm chill, but you hit me, you, you approach me with that. Look, and let's leave. What? Okay, let me smash a little more. You ready? Yeah, this right here is for everybody. They got me fucked up. You hear me? <laughs> you want to take a hit? After watching numerous hours of Daisy's content, I have concluded that her behavior is far from exemplary. Her interactions, especially during her live streams, shed a light on her true character. While I believe that self-awareness and a willingness to improve are commendable qualities, Daisy's current conduct cannot be overlooked. Her content often perpetuates negativity and vitriol, creating an environment that is neither constructive nor conducive to a healthy discourse. It is possible that a lack of attention for her contentious content might prompt a change in approach. However, I remain skeptical that such a scenario will materialize. Daisy appears to thrive on the notoriety that she gained through her inflammatory content. 
it seems unlikely that she would voluntarily relinquish this attention and validation that fuel her online persona. Bust the TVs up? Um, no. Huh? Come here. I didn't bust the TV up. Huh? Turn around. Turn around. That's not, that's my no, TV. No, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna find out. I brought that TV from my house. Alright, me too. No, don't, put, don't put my camera on the floor. Can you put it right there where the Apple sign is? Okay, what are you gonna do with it? You wanna call you guys in Cubs? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what do you want to do? Okay, okay. alright. Just go to the channel. Okay, alright. So put it where? Can you flip that's, it? Just put I it right there. I follow you with it. Oh, that's cool. Wait, we, he got him. Can you make sure that's our TV? Come on. Well, he's gonna verify. <laughs> so, so you follow you? Are you? Are you? Are we in it? Yeah, you are. Yo, I don't know what's happening. I just know that that's my TV. The impact of Daisy's behavior extends beyond her immediate circle. Her content contributes to a broader culture of toxicity and incivility online. It normalizes the use of hurtful and divisive language, creating an atmosphere where disrespectful dialogue becomes increasingly difficult. Daisy's behavior sets a poor example for younger viewers who may be drawn to her content. She may see her actions as acceptable behavior, but they are perpetuating a cycle of negativity and hostility. It is crucial for online platforms to take a proactive approach in addressing this issue. Establishing clear guidelines and enforcing consequences for violations can help create a safer and more respectful environment for all users. Additionally, promoting positive and inclusive content can help counterbalance the negative impact of individuals like Daisy. Ultimately, the onus does rely on each individual to make a conscious choice about the content they consume and engage with online. By choosing to support positive and uplifting creators, we can contribute to a healthier and more constructive online environment for ourselves and for future generations. With that said, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.